This is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher in Lincoln, Nebraska. And my guest today is Imogen Ragone, an Alexander Technique teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, I think both of us right now are primarily teaching online. And uh, I would like to, to kind of follow up on a previous conversation we had and I'll put a link to it uh, in the description of this uh, conversation. We were really talking about the question, how do you, what are some practical ways that you could inhibit, you, uh, use Alexander Technique inhibition as um, a process that can, that is useful and the question to me is always when which is how do, how do you go about doing it which is probably not the best way to think about it but how can you get to that point and we talked um a lot about a direction uh that with that i've been exploring a lot which is um this direction is simply it's a negative direction uh it's i'm i'm not doing and i i believe you've played around with it a fair amount, mm -hmm. right? And um, yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> no, <laughs> somewhat, <laughs> somewhat, yeah. And um, but you found it effective, right? Or not? Less effective than a free or something? It, it, yes, and it sort of has depended. I know when we did that from another conversation we did about an experiment um, when I was walking, and I am doing less mm -hmm. and you had a, a various different directions for me to try out the least effective one for me in that particular context was the, the i'm um, not i'm not i'm not doing okay well <laughs> I, I can say from, from and, my experience yeah. then uh, i found it to be a, a, a really effective direction mm -hmm. right up there with i'm free or I'm not compressing myself or any of the kind of old, somewhat older ones. And uh, we talked about some of um, some of the aspects of it that when you when you when you think I'm not doing, you're kind of covering quite a range of uh, responses to different aspects of yourself. That is part you may have some. You, there may be some things that you definitely would like not to do, like tighten your neck. And then there are some things like if you're walking, it's not so much that you don't want to do it, but you'd like to do it in a different way. So there's a range. And we talked, and I don't, I don't want to go into this too much, but we went into how interesting it is that your body can figure out which, yeah. which one you're dealing with and can adjust to that. And yeah. can I just yeah. interrupt for a moment sure. because yeah. I kind of put a bit of a um, negative spin on that yeah. experience with I'm doing in that context. Mm -hmm. But I noticed when you first said I'm not doing and introduced it because um, just to let everyone know, I have no idea what we were talking about today. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't prepared <laughs> well, in any way. No, um, certainly not. <laughs> um, but when you said those words, and I thought them to myself as you were saying them, I noticed that I let go a little bit of something that I wasn't hadn't been previously aware of. Right, and I think anyone listening or watching this could try that right now as well. Just very softly think to yourself, I'm not doing. And of course, with all the usual uh, parameters of directions, you don't want to actually do anything about that direction and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Well, in that conversation towards the end, you said something that kind of went right past me at the time. And I, I didn't, I think I probably didn't really respond to it that much. But when I went to watch the whole thing and got to uh -huh. that point, I realized I had just missed it because possibly my mind was figuring out the next thing to talk about. Who knows? But what you said was, 
one of the nice things about that direction I'm not doing is that it contains within it um, a uh, way it, 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 it that I'm not doing covers everything, including delivering that direction to yourself. Hmm. You remember saying that? Um, not exactly, but I could imagine that I said something like that. <laughs> well, yeah. you did. Yeah. You did yeah. say it. And mm -hmm. I just didn't pick up on it. And But once I started really thinking about that, I realized that's a really important aspect of that direction. Because it isn't going to be the, the best direction in the world self-direction in the world is not going to help any if you're you're doing a little efforting to project it to yourself. Yeah, I, I, I think I may have been talking about the direction I'm doing less. That was the main one we were talking about in that um, interview. Um, uh, this was a different one where we talked about how do you inhibit? How do we, uh, how do you learn to, how do you actually Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was a different, yes, different one. The the least amount of effort we can bring to delivering the direction, the better uh, make, be. the better it is, while also staying lightly engaged with it. It's not like so light that it's just like. Ugh. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be a thought. But yes. it, but the adding some doing to that thought is what it can undermine the usefulness of a direction. Yeah, and th this direction has a, so, a sort of a solution to that built into itself, as mm -hmm. I, I guess yeah. is how I would put it. And I thought it would be interesting. Uh, well, I will put a link to our previous discussion, which sort of stands on its own. But I think it would be interesting to talk about that question. Why is that so important to um, address the question of how do you deliver a direction to yourself? Because it can make all the difference of whether you get a useful result or not. And I'd like to, I'd like to um, uh, deliver three quotes from famous Alexander people and okay. then and then talk about them because I think they're all kind of addressing the same issue from different points of view. Uh, the first one is from Margaret Goldie, um, a close associate of Alexander, one of, the first, one of the first teachers he he trained and who taught for a long time after his death and was somewhat in opposition to the other teachers in England at that time. Um, with her, her, she had a very big emphasis in, in her thinking on inhibition. And she felt that the, the others weren't really doing that. And she may have been right. I was there at the time. I don't, I never really, we never really talked much about how to inhibit on my training course, but I think you had a little, different experience mm -hmm. on yours, but mm -hmm. in any event, yeah. she was very big on inhibition. And here's a quote of hers. If I ask you to, to do not to do something, there is no way you can do it right. There's no right way to do it. Some, I think that's the quote. There's no way you can do it right. Now, it feels like a little bit of a a it's, mental riddle. It's a, <laughs> it's a mental riddle that I think has all kinds of valuable implications for all of us. Because it could easily be read as, oh my God, there's some cranky old lady. He's already, she's already telling us that we're going to screw up. So, you know, who needs that in their life, right? But in fact, what she was, what she's saying is that if if the project is to stop is to um, not to do something, then there is no way you can do that correctly because hopefully you're not doing anything correct or incorrect. You're not doing, and that's the and and is that is that being the case? There's no pressure on you to get it right. 
Mm. There, there's no way you can get it right because getting it yeah. right is just not part of the, you can't do it correctly because in fact, the direction is to not do. Yes. So it seems like it would really help someone um, let go of all the, the trying, which is effort, you know, to trying to please the teacher, do be a good girl. Boy. Or she just get the benefit <laughs> yeah. of get the benefit of yeah. that direction. Because she you could you could change the wording of her quote to instead of if I ask you to not do something, it would be equally uh, applicable to uh, if you ask yourself not to do something, there's no way you can do that right. You can't do it right. It isn't a doing thing. So. Right. But I think it's kind of a language twister, though. Um, it is a language it's, it's, twister. Yeah. And it could, there are various ways you could interpret that quote. And I think they're all kind of correct in their own ways. But the, the way I'm really interested in is taking away the option to try to do a, do a better job of self-directing. Yeah. Because that doing a better job is almost certainly going to get in the way of the direction, of the direction doing its thing. Depends how you do a better or job. Or how you don't do it. If you, <laughs> if you do a better job by not doing anything and telling you, I'm job, being like yeah. devil's advocate here. If, you a know, better, um, if a better job has been done, but not by <laughs> you, then you're better off. Anyway, okay. <laughs> the, the, but she, she was getting at this question yeah. that people tend to want to help out with their directions yes. and that, that yes. gets in the way. Now, another famous quote, at least in Marge Barstow's circles, was from A.R. Alexander, Alexander's mm -hmm. brother, Albert, who has this I think, kind of interesting quote, be patient, stick to principle, and it will all open <laughs> up like a giant cauliflower. Now, <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, I think that means if you sticking to principle is you're you're sticking to uh, an inhibitory approach to things. I'm not doing. Yeah, it. I think the the patient piece that uh, preceded it kind of uh, alludes to that, yeah. like you know. So you're uh, delivering to the this, idea of allowing. Um, but you're, yeah, you're delivering it, what could be a very useful direction to yourself. It doesn't even have to be a negative direction. It could be, yeah. you know, my neck is free. That's a really good direction, but it carries with it a little temptation to help out. And he's saying that temptation yeah. to help out in a way is like a little bit of impatience on your part. Yeah. You're not yeah. happy just delivering this direction and not monitoring and keeping track of it. Is it is it working? Is it not working? Do I notice a change? Blah, blah, blah. All yeah. that stuff mm -hmm. uh, just gets in the way. And, and he's saying, be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will all open up like a giant cauliflower. <laughs> and the other quote, it's a somewhat longer one by Mar Marjorie Barlow, Alexander's niece, mm -hmm. uh, a very well-known teacher in England on, in her own right, the late Marjorie Barlow. And in her book, she has a book called An Examined Life, which I highly recommend people get. It's really a good book. Yeah. And you've got it, right? I've read a, a while ago now, but I enjoyed right. it very much. Yeah. And she's she's she quotes Alexander on the topic of giving directions. He talked about giving directions and he mm -hmm. said uh, that it's an exercise in finding out what thinking is. Mm. And just to go on with that, 
so that she's quoting Alexander, who apparently said that to her. And she says, if that doesn't put it in a nutshell, I don't know, because it's so hard for us to think. By that word, we mean to send a direction, not to try to implement it, not to try to carry it out, not even a teeny weeny bit, I love that. We're always inclined to think, oh, well, just a little bit, just give it a little nudge. And then she says, and a lot of that is not very conscious. Actually, the degree uh, which we are helping it along or trying to help it along, uh, it's a blind alley. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, she's saying that it's not always obvious that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. You may have the best of intentions not to implement a direction that's your self-direction, but if a part of you is kind of checking up on how it's going, that's a doing, and mm -hmm. that's getting in the way. And that, that cycles back to AR's quote, you know? Yeah, it seems patient. very related, yeah. Be patient. Yeah. And it, I think it also relates to Margaret Goldie's quote, because mm -hmm. she's saying, you can take a lot of pressure off yourself by knowing ahead of time that you can't, there, there's no way to do that kind of direction right. Mm. Because the direction really is a non-doing direction. Yes, yeah. So that's really, you know, and so all of that's to say that that's a huge, um, that's one of the biggest problems new students have when they start to learn how to self-direct. I would just quote one other person, mm -hmm. uh, a, a teacher named uh, uh, Bill Conable, William Conable, who, mm -hmm. along with his wife, wrote uh, a, a book, uh, How to Learn the Alexander Technique. He, and uh, I was at a, a, on one of Marge Bert, a Barstow's workshops once, and he was teaching a little group that I was in. And someone, someone, um, got a little help from him, I guess, and mm -hmm. took off walking or doing something with that new thought. And pretty quickly, they, 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 they said, oh, I can really feel a difference in my knees or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and Bill said, that's a really dangerous moment when that happens. Mm. It's a dangerous mm -hmm. moment when you give a direction to yourself and there's an immediate good thing that happens. It's dangerous because that good thing can draw, suck you into being interested in it and possibly even helping it a little. Yeah, or trying to replicate it. Replicate next time. it. There are just all sorts of ways <laughs> that are very subtle ways that you can get in the way of just a pure direction or what Mar Marjorie Barlow would say, finding out what thinking is, or he's quoting Alexander. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Find real thinking is thinking. It's but not I think thinking it's... and being interested in the outcome at the same time and letting that out your perception of that outcome modify your thinking or taking yeah. it away from your thinking. It, it I mean this yes i i think it's one of the most challenging things because there's the other side of it is that to to really recognize that any thought has a uh physical physiological expression yes. not a thought is not purely mental and maybe that's oh, what yeah. alexander meant like finding out what thinking really is or whatever the exact words were um so it, it's like i think it's to do with with experience mm -hmm. trusting that the thought is enough and the, the other tricky thing is it's useful to be aware and to notice but can we notice slightly and not have that 
um, you know, nudges to, to try and help it along. Right. Um, and, and Alexander, I don't have the quote in front of me, but on his first training course, he, he was interviewed a lot by uh, George Trevelyan, who was mm -hmm, one of the mm -hmm. students there. And he says, he's, Alexander says at one point, uh, none, of my, none of my students will believe that all they need to do is think the thought, and these are mm -hmm. Alexander's words roughly, think the thought and that will do the trick. Yeah, because they are much. all slaves to muscle, oh. to their muscles. <laughs> They're all wanting to engage muscles to do something, to fix something, or to add to something. And um, he was frustrated by the sa the same thing that really all these other people mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. are are talking about. And given that that is. You know, it's a pro like if you if you if you give a direction to yourself in an activity and the activity gets easier, mm -hmm. I mean that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and then having a little problem around that in that oh I'm tempted to change the thing I thought in order to accommodate to what this new thing feels like that that could be a problem. But I always tell my students that's a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, that tells you that the direction itself is pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's doing something useful. And now, now you've, got to, you've got to keep out of the way of that doing its thing. And that takes practice. Yeah. It takes yeah. practice. And so I think all these people are saying the same thing. And I think mm -hmm. that the, the, the direction I'm not doing really addresses that along with other stuff quite nicely. Mm -hmm. And that's the part I, that you pointed out, but I missed in our earlier conversation. So really- You this, missed my words of wisdom, I did, and I, feel, I, I feel really <laughs> bad about it because I didn't actually listen to the entire thing until about a week ago. And I, and I got to that point and I thought, well, oh my God, I just, I just, yeah, I just ignored you. So sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's I all. That's it. all I have to say. This is kind yeah. of. I would just say in general, this is sort of part. Gonna, I think, could be labeled part two of of our conversation. I also mm -hmm. feel like yeah. um, we might be starting to grapple with the question of the intersection between non doing and inhibition. Are they the same? Are they different? Oh What's my the God, difference? what a can of so, words that could be. So yeah. I just thought I would and, leave us on this cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, there's more. I mean, we're, I, I, think, I, I think we should make it. I guess one thing I didn't say at the beginning, if anyone who doesn't know about the Alexander Technique has followed us so far, that would be amazing. Because honestly, this conversation <laughs> is really aimed at teachers and Alexander teachers and students. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't intending to start talking about it now, but just thought I would leave that question yeah. there. And I'd like to say that this is part two and there uh, undoubtedly be a part three, maybe a part four, but we're, what we're really kind of wrestling with here is, uh, okay. Inhibition is a great thing. You, 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 you stop and let things emerge, right? That's a really good idea and the question to me always is okay how do you do that or not do that but how do you get there and you know there are various strategies you can use the kind of game that alexander played with himself and the use of the self with he's sitting in a chair he thinks well i might stand up i might not i might raise an arm I might not do anything so he's presenting a whole range of possible things that he could be doing so as not to commit to any one thing because that commitment ahead of time is then going to kind of follow you as you do the activity and will make it less effective so yeah. that was a kind of mental trick he used to get into that place. I tend to think if you can get it, get the right direction and learn how to, well, in this case, the right direction carries with it the instructions on how to deliver it. Um, to me, that seems a quicker and more effective way to get there. And I will say that students, uh, 
we did an earlier interview where I talked you through the whole process of just starting with that thought and then maybe reaching out and picking up a cup of water or something, just very breaking down a very simple movement into various steps and saying, well, what happens if you add the thought I'm not doing? And I find that students get that right away. You, you know, if you say you're sitting at a desk and there's a book on the desk and I like you to do everything that you would do to pick it up, except no moving. Just have the idea that you're going to pick it up and see what you notice in yourself. Mm -hmm. And people pretty quickly notice, oh, <laughs> I seem to have tightened up a little. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and then I said, we'll do the same thing with and add the direction I'm not doing. And, they, you know, we can we could talk sure. the students through that pretty easily. And most, these are brand new students too. We only had one or two lessons typically when I would bring this up and, and they get it. So yep. as a teaching methodology, I guess I'd, I'd give pretty high marks to that direction as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you want to add anything before we? No, I think we've covered a lot. And, but yes, I think there'll be future installments. We want your feedback. Mm -hmm. viewers and listeners please because i don't i don't think we've got to the end of the line on this discussion <laughs> but i think we're moving in the right direction will you ever get to the end of the line maybe i doubt the it whole point <laughs> in <the> journey in <laughs> yeah oh, wow. exactly it's the journey <laughs> <sighs> It's almost too much wisdom to take in in the morning, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Rob. It's been very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, uh, you know, my guest is uh, Imogen. Today has been Imogen Ragon. And I'll put a link to her website. I'll put a link to um, some other stuff that I think is relevant to our, our conversation. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome.